finally, the farmhouse is finished. So today we're gonna to go through a complete cost breakdown analysis and time of how much energy and how much investment we made into this farmhouse. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna reveal how much I sold it for. So you get an idea how much money I made per year renovating my own property. This is not meant to be uh, a Bible for everybody who's in renovation, but it is definitely a good guide to get an idea of what the cost versus benefit looks like. Now, every market's a little bit different, so be careful. If you need more information, we've got videos about that, but we're gonna just dive right into it. Now, hi, my name is Jeff Thorman. If you're new to our channel and you haven't seen our DIY projects before, then welcome. We are gonna go through the last two years, my farmhouse renovation that we've been doing here on YouTube. We'd show a bunch of how-to videos, and we also have a second channel showing all the behind the scenes and the process and what it was like working with my family. <sighs> Finally, that project is finished, okay? Now, full disclosure, I bought this house seven years ago. Well, welcome to my old house. This is the project we picked up a couple years ago. It's kind of like a bit of a retirement plan almost. For the first five years that I was here, I didn't do a whole lot to it, right? When I bought this house, I was busy in construction. I hadn't even started a YouTube channel yet. And the goal at that point was to build the retirement home dream house for my wife. Yeah, right? So five years ago, we started on YouTube and we started doing some of the videos here. And now the last two years have been full-time renovating. So here we go. I bought the house seven years ago for $240,000. Right now, we're just gonna go through all the costs. First of all, when you have an old farmhouse, you've got years and years and layers and layers, and we had to peel it all oh, back yeah. like an onion. And generally, we did this one room at a time, but as time moved on, we got more efficient, and I rented a house, and we got more in-depth, but we did have to do a lot of demolition, remove a lot of interior walls, get rid of a lot of lath and plaster, and a lot of old flooring, and so on, plus all the old siding and windows and doors, and doing that, required us to get about a demolition cost of about $6,000 worth of dumpster fees. Dumpster after dumpster after dumpster. That seems expensive, but over two years, it's actually pretty reasonable. And considering today's marketplace where we live, you only get a dumpster for a week and then they start charging you by the day to have it on your property. We actually were pretty efficient in getting that done. Now, after we had everything removed, we had to redo the house systems. So we had structural issues that we had to deal with and we had framing issues that we had to deal with. So we had about $4,500 that we invested in reframing and restructuring, adding tele telescopic posts to reinforce all of the trees in the basement that were holding this place up. And then we also had to redo all of the insulation in this house. So we had crawl space, spray foam, we had some blanket insulation on the stone walls in the basement. Of course, we had fiberglass paint, everything in this property because it's cost benefit, right? It's the most cost effective way to insulate. So that's the way we went with. That was about 2000 bucks. And then we had to add a brand new vapor barrier and we cut back the old flooring so that we could access the vapor barrier all the way up through the balloon frame of this house, right into the basement. It's a lot of labor of love. And the more efficient you are at doing that, the better the air seal. Sealed it all together for about $400. That's just plastic and tape. The next two systems we had to upgrade, of course, was the electrical and the plumbing. The plumbing here was complete cowboy. It was black rubber hoses for supply lines. It was like total cottage, right? Rip it all out. We upgraded everything to PEX. Brand new drain waste and venting right through to the roof instead of just the soffits. We also updated the electrical panel. We had the hydro change from the street to a 200 amp service. That way we could facilitate having the hot tub added to the house, which is code. We did all of that work on permit, added all LED lights and dimmer switches throughout the whole property, and that has changed things dramatically. We also have all of the plugs upgraded now to arc fault circuit, so this house is very modern in the, in the way that it runs. The electrical is 6,500. That's with an electrician for the, for the panel changeover. All of the materials for me, because I did all the wiring here on my own permit as a homeowner, that is a great way to save a lot of money if you've got the ability to do that. We also updated all the plumbing, the plumbing was about $2,500. Again, I did it myself. It's not that expensive. It's just a labor of love, okay? One more system that we incorporated in this house that a lot of single family homes don't have is soundproofing. Now listen, most houses today aren't built with any soundproofing at all. They don't care about noise, transfer floor to floor, room to room, inside to outside. But we do, because our house is on the street. It's near the corner of an old country road. So what we did is we soundproofed with sound reduction windows. We did extra layers of drywall and different caulking and took different measures, especially in the loft, which is designed to be more of an office. So we have 
resilient channel and vinyl loaded mass and we've done a few upgrades here this house is almost whisper quiet even though it's right next to a busy street and that makes an amazing upgrade and it was only about fifteen hundred dollars to do that we have videos and all that information so you can check those out later of course living in the country one of the greatest concerns anybody has is the water quality downstairs i had the company come by paid these guys to put in an incredible water filtration and water softening system. It even has hydrogen peroxide and has different filters that can be changed out as needed. And we added an RO system underneath the sink. I've got zero parts per million as far as my fresh water is concerned. There's no smell and there's no taste. And I'll tell you the honest truth, it's the best damn water I've ever had in my entire life. So there's the major cost for systems, right? Everybody wants to know what's it really gonna cost to do something. Now costs may vary based on where you live, right? So you can't just say, well, Jeff said he could get all the electrical done for 6,500. No, Jeff said he hired an electrician to switch out the panel. That only takes about three hours. It's not as expensive as you think. And where I live, the municipality or the hydro people came by and they did the switch over and turned off the power supply free of charge. You get one of those for every homeowner in your lifetime at the house. So take advantage of it. If you have to turn the power off, upgrade your panel. It's a great way to get good value for your buck. Before we go through the walkthrough of the house and show you all the before and afters and talk about the time and the cost, let's talk about the outside. Because most people don't give the outside enough credit. But in reality, that's where most of your value or the increase of the value of the property occurs. It's outside the house. We had really old siding and windows, okay? And so we peeled it all back, back to the original barn board of the house, added a house wrap system that didn't exist before, and then we put on brand new siding and brand new construction windows with a built-in flange that gives you a, the ability to have great water proofing. I know this might seem ridiculous, but all the doors and windows here were just a little over $7,000. And that's because I installed it all myself and I took the time to go down to a local window company and open up a contractor account. So I saved myself about $14,000 off the actual cost of those windows and then I installed them myself, so I already made a ton of money right there. We'll talk more about how much money I made later in the video. For all of the siding on this house, right, including all of the flashing, it was about 3,500 bucks. Not expensive, again, but I also had scaffolding rentals in there as well. The scaffolding rental was about $1,800 because I had it here for a few weeks. I was a little bit slow getting it done, but again, it was COVID. So when we didn't have something to do and the weather was good, we worked on the siding. And when we had the ability to go work on a different part of the system, we would switch back over again because once the material and the scaffolding was here, I always had something to do. And I was more willing to pay for extra scaffolding rental in order to be efficient with every other aspect of the build, knowing there was going to be delays and material holdups. Make any sense? Kind of felt like I threw a little bit of money away there, but at the end of the day, I never had a day that I wasn't working. And you've also got to consider the weather. Out here, our weather is a real mix. We don't get a long dry season. It's rainy a couple days, it's dry a couple days, and it's like that all summer long. So we took advantage of the nice days and worked outside whenever we could, and then we had to work somewhere else inside. That made the whole process a little more expensive. But I'm getting old and I don't like working in the rain. Another project that we did was the roof. I subbed that out. I'm not climbing a roof for anybody, especially in an old farmhouse. That cost me almost $13,000. The rest of the outside, we did the patio. Did that ourselves. Material, labor, equipment, rental, all right, and, and, and all of the stone and GA and, and landscape cloth. That project came out to about $12,000. We redid the deck, all brand new cedar, another 2,800 bucks. We did the three season room, okay, which is an exterior project. We insulated it. We put in brand new marine vinyl track windows, but all of that together, that season room was about $6,800. And that's a great investment because that added living space onto the house that didn't exist before. And it makes this house just a hell of a lot more comfortable in the fall and in the spring. Other major costs outside were doing the, the brand new shed. Okay, so we had two little sheds before. We put in a nice bigger one on a concrete pad and that cost about $7,000 all together. That's doors, windows, um, concrete, and all of the wood, which was expensive last year, but we got her done. And so it's good to have that finished. We also did the cedar hedge. We removed an old hedge, 450 feet of cedar hedge. It was 25 feet tall, it was wild grown. We had to have it all removed, stump ground. We put a new berm back and then we put in a brand new hedge, right? And we also added like a dozen dump trucks to fill up the void in the back half of the, of the property so that we wouldn't have a swamp there anymore. And that made the yard usable and then we seeded and grew a new lawn. So the lawn and the hedge cost us about $15,000. But without it, 
This is just a farmhouse on a corner property near a road with a swamp in the backyard. Nobody wants to buy that. The rest of the projects on the outside of the house were just grading, putting in some pea gravel, adding a retaining wall, reframing around some of the windows and getting rid of some drywall rot, okay? And all of that came to about 2,500 bucks. And there is the cost for all of the exterior. Now it's time to do a walkthrough and we'll go room by room how long it took to do the project with all the finishing and what the actual cost was for all of the drywall paint and trims and flooring and fixtures and finishes, okay? Here we go. Enjoy this ride. The front entrance, once it was completely gut and rebuilt, cost about $2,700 and it took us about a month. That includes the flooring, the drywall, the paint and that cute little front cubby area that's up there, all right? In, as well, in that part of the house, we have the loft. That loft is the office where we did the soundproofing. The finishing there took about three weeks, okay? That includes the carpet and the glass railing and all the paint and drywall and light fixtures and of course the Murphy bed and the built-ins around that. And all of that costs about $6,000. Custom glass isn't cheap, Murphy beds aren't cheap, carpet and carpet installers aren't cheap, but the reality is, is it took a space that was unusable and made it usable. And that is huge value because that adds square footage of usable space to the house. The main floor bathroom took three weeks to remodel, all right? And that cost me $6,500. That is all of my fixtures, in-floor heat, custom shower, plus the shower tower, the lighting, the towel warmer, the fan, the heated floor, the vanity, the custom stone sink, the tile, the mirror, everything in there. That is great bang for your buck. Most renovations of that scope, if you were to subcontract that order in the $25,000 range. So to be able to do it for six means you're making money. The living room also took about four weeks. Okay, and that was just about the process of doing all the drywalling and running all the wiring, getting the flooring done, building out the fireplace area, trimming out the windows, and doing a quality paint job. That front room cost me $7,000. And some of that expense is in hiring a gas guy to run the gas line and install that fireplace. The pantry itself took about two weeks. It's a relatively simple, straightforward project. Installing cabinets, painting, countertop, custom shelving. Not a real big project, and it only cost me 1,600 bucks. And the, what the pantry did is it made this kitchen really big, bright, and open so we could put all of our storage behind a door, right? The dining room area only took a couple of weeks and really all it was was just building out the coffered ceiling, paint, flooring, and trims, right? Nothing really too dramatic there. And it cost about 1,500 bucks. The kitchen was the big one. This one takes a little bit longer and partly because you're doing work and then you're ordering products and then once those products are in, then you can continue on with your work. It's the cabinet counter, then tile, and then the flooring, and all these kinds of questions, right? And if you're not sure what to do in what order, we have videos about that, so check out our site. We'll put video links in the description below. But the kitchen took about eight weeks altogether, and it cost me about $20,000. That's countertops, cabinet, fixtures, sinks, dishwashers, the bar fridge, the stove, the hood, the fridge, that's appliances and everything, and all the light fixtures combined. And you might think that that sounds expensive, but realize that an actual kitchen with this many and this quality of appliances on a nine foot island, don't be surprised that you're gonna get contractor quotes in the 60 to $70,000 range. So, I know it sounds like a lot of money, but it is a great value. And since we're renovating the entire home and the whole home is gonna have the same look and feel and flow, it was crucial to spend good money on good fixtures here so we didn't devalue the price of the house when we went to sell. The second bedroom was really simple. It took two weeks, we were getting carpet installed. I just had to kind of clean it up, frame in the closet doors, and give it a really good paint job. So there wasn't a whole lot to that one, and it cost me about 1,500 bucks. Not bad to go from a, a bedroom that was from 1880 and make it a modern room for just pennies on the glass, really. The staircase only took a week. For me, that was just a paint job, cleaning up the handrail, and then calling in the carpet guys, right? Again, the carpet guys did that. We put in the handrail afterwards, about $1,400 for that whole area. That was a really good investment. The bedroom was a labor of love. That's about a six week project. That one involved us reframing the space and removing a closet that was there, rebuilding the walk-in closets that are wall to wall up there, vaulting the ceiling, new insulation, of course. All of those processes take time because that's an old farmhouse with a bad slope. So we were working constantly in there with laser levels and drawing one line around the wall to build down from to the floor. And we had to scribe every door in that room to fit that space. That was a lot of work, but we also added the tile feature and the hardwood flooring. And I think with the soundproofing measures in there, it makes it a really amazing space. Worth every minute that we spent in there. And we invested with the custom closets and the flooring and everything else, about $15,000. That might seem a little excessive, but at the same time, 
That is a really gorgeous room, and that's where most people spend a lot of time. So you don't want to cheap out and just say, oh, here's your little box to sleep in. We wanted to make it a place that you could stay and be comfortable and enjoy being in. The ensuite bath, of course, is the last major project. We did a remodeling on an existing bathroom, and it only took three weeks. This is really cool because it was a major project that we made simple, and we only spent $7,500 on it. That involved all the tile, the new glass door, the vanity, the countertop, the mirrors, the lights. Uh, it, it goes on and on and on. The flooring, the new toilet install, when that project is all said and finished, that made that bathroom really to the same value and on par with the rest of the home. Can't just leave something ugly, even though it's functional, when you're trying to get best bang for your buck and sell in a house. Now, all together, the work. We did about 35 weeks on the property and on all of the rough work, okay? Maybe 40. And we did another 40 weeks on all the finishing of the interior. And that's an 80 week renovation. And over the course of two years, that makes a lot of sense, right? Yes, I took some time off, I was on holidays, we do a lot of filming, and so that drags out the process. And so all in all, it took us basically two years working full time renovating this house, and I had my son working with me full time as well at the same time. So because he was here, what does that mean? We have another cost we have to add to this project. That one is what I would call the pizza and beer cost. Yeah, it's $24,000 in pizza and beer for two guys to work on a house for two years. <laughs> you gotta suck that up. You gotta, you gotta factor in all of these things, right? Now, when we put it all together, we end up with an 80 week project, all right? With about a $211,000 investment. I know that sounds like a lot, but over two years, that does sound like a lot. But if you were to be able to take that same investment and stretch it over whatever time your budget would allow, you could get the same result. So let's say you did it in four or eight years. All of a sudden, if you do it in four years, you're doing 50,000 a year. If you do it in eight years, you're doing $25,000 a year, okay? Now, you've gotta have the money in order to do it. So, you might find that the following advice is a really good thing for you. Take whatever you're doing for a living and start working weekends with the skills you've developed on the channel. Put that pot of money together so you can invest in yourself and in your own house over the next couple of years. I bought it for 240, we spent 211, and I sold it for 650,000. That was my original goal. We tried to get more, but it didn't happen, and that's okay. So full disclosure, I ended up buying the house and paying to renovate a little over $450,000. So now you know what I made. Now you divide that into two years of actual hard work, you get an idea of how much money you can make renovating your property. I've been telling you for years that if you invest in yourself and where you live, you can make a ton of cash. Knowledge is power. And if you're competent and you can fix your own house, you can get ahead of the curve of the rest of the world. All right, DIY isn't for everybody, but it's something everybody should be doing. Cheers till next time. Check out this video over here and I'll explain exactly how it works that you can turn your part-time work on your own house into an actual salary.